The Cube presents KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to Valencia, Spain, and KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. I'm Keith Townsend, my co-host, Paul Gillen, Senior Editor, Enterprise Architecture for Silicon Angle. We're going to talk, or continue to talk, to amazing people. The coverage has been amazing, but also the city of Valencia is beautiful. I have to eat a little crow. I landed and I saw the convention center. Paul, have you got out and explored the city at Absolutely. all? Absolutely, my first reaction to Valencia when we were out in this industrial section was, this looks like Cincinnati. Yes. But then I, I got on the bus there, second day here, 10 minutes to downtown, another world. It's the, it's, it's a, a almost a middle ages flavor down there with these little winding streets and just absolutely gorgeous city. Beautiful city, I compared it to Charlotte. No, no disrespect to, to Charlotte, but it, this is an amazing city. Nana Singh, Principal Product Manager at Red Hat, and Roland Russ, also Principal Product Manager at Red Hat. We're going to talk a little serverless. I'm going to get this right off the bat. People get kind of feisty when we call things like K-native mm. serverless. What's the difference between something like a Lambda mm -hmm. and K-native? So I'll start. Um, Lambda is like a function as a service, right? Which is one of the definitions of serverless. Um, serverless is a deployment platform now. When we introduced serverless to containers through K-native, that's when the serverless got revolutionized it democratized serverless. Lambda was proprietary based. You write small snippets of code, run for a short duration of time, on demand, and done. And then came Knative, which brought serverless to containers, where all those benefits of easy, practical, event-driven, running on demand, going up and down, all those came to containers. So that's where Knative comes into picture. Yeah, I would also say that uh, Knative is based on containers from the very beginning. And so it really allows you to run arbitrary workloads on, on, in your container, whereas with Lambda you have to, uh, full, you have only a limited set of languages that you can use, and you have uh, a runtime contract there, which is much easier with Knative to run your applications, for example, if it's coming in a language that is not supported by Lambda. And of course, the, the major, the most important benefit of Knative is that it's run on top of Kubernetes, which means, which yes. allows you to run your uh, serverless platform on any part, any other Kubernetes installation. So I think this is one of the, yeah. the biggest things. I think we things. saw about three years ago there was a burst of interest around serverless yeah. computing and uh, really some very compelling uh, cost arguments for using it. Uh, and then it seemed to die down. We haven't heard a lot about serverless, and maybe I'm just not listening to the right people, but what is it going to take for serverless to kind of break out and achieve its potential? Yeah, yeah I, would, I would say that really the, the, the big advantage, of course, of, of Knative in that case is that you can scale down to zero. I think this is one of the, the big things that, uh, that will really bring more people on, onto board because you really save a lot of money with that if, if you applications are not running when they are not used. And yeah, it takes really, yeah, I think also that the, because you don't have this vendor login part thing, and so on, when people realize that there are more, that you can run it really on every Kubernetes platform, then I think that the, the rise of server, uh, the journey of serverless will continue. And I will add that the event-driven applications, there hasn't been enough buzz around them yet. Like, there is, but <laughs> Serverless is going to bring a new leash and life on them, right? The other thing is the ease of use for developers. Uh, with Knative, we are uh, introducing a new uh, programming model, the functions, where you don't even have to create containers. It would do hmm. create containers for you. So you create the services, but not the containers? Right now, you create the like you create the containers, and then you deploy them in a serverless fashion using Knative. But the container creation was on the developers. Mm -hmm. And functions is going to be the third component of Knative that we are developing upstream, and Red Hat donated that project. Yeah. Um, is going to be where code to cloud capability. So you bring your code, and everything else will be taken care of. So, so I, I, I call a function, or it's mm -hmm. funny, we're kind of circular with this. What used to be, I write a function and put it into a container, the, this service will 
provide that function, I just call that function as if I'm developing kind of a local, no code, not no code, but local effort. So if there's a, a, a repetitive thing that the community wants to do, you can, you'll provide that as a predefined function or yeah. as a service. Yeah, exactly. So this is really, so functions really help the developer to bring their code into the container. So it's really kind of a new abstraction over, to, over top of Knative. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course it's also a more opinionated approach. It's really more closer coming to Lambda now because this also comes with a programming model, which, which, a lot, which means that you have certain signature that you have to implement and other stuff. Uh, but you can also create your own templates. But because at the end it's always what, what matters is that you have a container at the end that you can run on Knative. What kind of applications is serverless really the yeah. ideal platform? Yeah, so um, of course, uh, the ideal application is a HTTP-based web application that has no state, and that is, uh, has a very non-uniform traffic, uh, traffic shape, which means hmm. that, uh, for example, if you have uh, a business where you only have spikes at certain times, like maybe for Super Bowl or, or Christmas, if you was the one selling, uh, some, some merchandise like that, then you can scale up from zero very quickly and arbitrary high depending on the load. And this is, I think, the, the big benefit over, for example, Kubernetes HP, uh, horizontal port autoscaler where it's more like indirect measure where you're scaling based on CPU and memory. But here it's directly related one-to-one -to, -one to the traffic that is coming in, the concurrent requests. And th yeah, so this helps uh, a lot for non-uniform traffic shapes. That I think this is one of the idea, ideal yeah. use cases. But I think that is one of the most used or defined one. But I, I do believe that you can write almost all applications. There are some, of course, that would not be the right load, but as long as you are handling state through external mechanism, let's say, for example, you're using database to save the state, or you're using physical volume mount to save the state, uh, it, increase, it, it is, increases the density of your cluster because when they're running, the containers would pop up. When your application is not running, the container would go down and the resources can be used to run any other application that you want to use, right? So, when I'm thinking about Lambda, I, I kind of get the event-driven nature of Lambda. I have a S3 bucket and if a S3 event is driven, then my functions as a service will start, and that's kind of the listening service. Mm -hmm. How does that work with Knative or a Kubernetes-based thing? Because I don't always have, a, I don't have an event-driven thing that I can think of mm -hmm. that kicks off. Like, what, how can I do that in, in, in Kubernetes? So, I'll start. So, it is exactly the same thing. In Knative world, it's the container that's going to come up, oh. and your service is in the container that will do the processing of that same event that you are talking. So that's a, the notification came from S3 service when the object got dropped. That would trigger an application. And in world of Kubernetes Knative, it's the container that's going to come up with the service in it, do the processing, um, either fire another service or whatever it needs to do. Yeah. So Knative is listening for the event yeah. And when the event happens, then Knative executes the container. Exactly, so there's Basically. the concept of a Knative source, which is kind of an adapter to the external world, for example, for the three bucket, and as soon as there are event coming in, Knative will wake up that service, will turn, transmit this event as a cloud event, which is another standard from the CNCF, and then uh, when the service is done, then the service spins down again to zero, so that the service is only running when there are events, and which is very cost effective and um, which people really actually like to, to have this kind of dynamic scaling up from, from zero to one and, and even higher like that. Uh, Lambda has been sort of uh, synonymous with mm. uh, serverless in the early going here. Is Knative a competitor to Lambda? Is it complementary? Would you use yeah. the two together? Yeah, I, I would say that um, Lambda, Lambda is, a, is a offering from AWS, so it's a cloud service there. Knative itself is a platform, so you can run it in the cloud, and there are also cloud offerings, like from IBM. Um, but uh, you can also run it on-premise, for example. That's, that's the alternative, so you can have a really, you can have also have hybrid set scenarios where you really can uh, put one part into the cloud, the other part on-prem. And I think there's a big difference that you have a much more flexibility and you can avoid this kind of vendor login yeah. compared to AWS Lambda. Because Knative provides specifications and confirmation right, tests. So 
you can move from one service to another. So from if you are on IBM offering, that's using Knative, and if you go to a cloud, a Google offering, that's on Knative, or a Red Hat offering on Knative, it should be seamless because they are both conforming to the same specifications of Knative. But whereas if you are in Lambda, there are custom deployments, so you are only going to be able to run those workloads only on AWS. So Knative Con, uh, a co-located event as part of KubeCon. I'm, I'm curious as to the level of effort and the user interaction uh, for deploying Knative. Because when I think about Lambda or Cloud Run or one of the other functions as a service, there is no, there is no back end that I have to worry about. And I think this is where some of the debate comes over server list versus some other definition. What's the level of lifting that needs to be done to deploy Knative in my Kubernetes environment? So if like, is this something that comes as base mm. part of the OpenShift mm. install, or do I have to like, you know, yeah. do I have to? Go ahead, you answer the question. Okay, so actually for OpenShift, it's a, it's a code layer product. So you have this catalog of, of operator that you can choose from, and OpenShift serverless is one part of that. So it's really kind of a one-click install, where you have also get a default configuration. You can flexibly configure it as you like. And, and, and this is really, yeah, it's a, I think we think that's a good use experience. And of course you can go to this uh, cloud offerings like Google Cloud One or IBM Code Engine. They just have everything set up for you. And um, yeah, you have also different alternatives. You have hand charts, you can install Knative in different ways. How you want to involve, and you also have options for the, for the back-end systems. For example, we, we mentioned that when an event comes in, then there's a broker in the middle of something which just patches all the events to the services, and there you can have a, a different backend system like Kafka or AMQP, so you can have very production grade messaging system which really are responsible for delivering your events to your service. Uh, now Knative has recent, I'm sorry, did I interrupt no, you? No, I was just going to say that Knative, when we talk about, we, we generally just talk about the serverless deployment model, right? and the eventing gets eclipsed in. That eventing, which provides this infrastructure for producing and consuming event, is inherent part of Knative, right? So you install Knative, the eventing also get, you, you install eventing, and then you are ready to connect all your disparate systems through events. With, with cloud events, that's the specification we use for consistent and portable um, events, so. Uh, Knative recently, uh, admitted to the, or accepted by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, incubating there, congratulations, that's a big Thank step. Thank you. Uh, how does that change the outlook for Knative adoption? So, we get a lot of support now from the CNCF, which is really great, so we could be part of this conference, for example, which was not so easy before that. And uh, we see really a lot of interest, and we also heard before that move that many contributors were not started into looking into Knative because of this kind of non being part of a neutral foundation, but uh, so they were kind of afraid that the, the project would go away anytime uh, like that. And we see uh, uh, the adoption really increases, but slowly at the moment. So we are still in ramping up uh, there, and we really hope for more, more contributors, and yeah. That's like CNCF is almost synonymous with open source and trust, yeah. right? So being in CNCF, and then having this first Knative Con event as part of KubeCon, we are hoping and it's, it's a recent addition to CNCF as mm -hmm. well, right? So we are hoping that this events and these interviews, this, this will catapult more interest into serverless. Um, so I, I'm really, really hopeful and I'm, I only see positive from here on out for Knative. Well, I can sense the excitement. Uh, Knative Con sold out. That Congratulations on that. Thank you. I can talk about serverless all day. It's a, it's a topic that I really love. It's a fascinating way to build applications and manage applications, but we have a lot more coverage to do today. <laughs> on the Cube from Spain, from Valencia, Spain, I'm Keith Townsend along with Paul Gillen, and you're watching the Cube, the leader in high-tech coverage.